Hi guys, like I always say, I'm not an expert at body work, but I have done some in the past and I've had a method of doing it with putting on body putty and then sanding it out and then, you know, filling in the holes and sanding it out again and probably be two or three times of that. And uh, I was watching Bad Chad and he doesn't do it that way at all. He puts all the body putty on and then he sands it all down and when it gets down to the point where it's smooth and level and shaped out right, he quits. And then it's, he's done instead of having to go back and do it over and over. Anyway, you uh, should watch him to see that because he's actually good at it. But anyway, so I've got a little bit of body filler here and I'm going to be doing the same kind of thing that he does. But I do have to do a little modification to it because I know i got to add here and I don't want to add over high ridges. Probably because I didn't smear it on as good as I should have in the first place. See, like i got to put filler on this. Now, this is a big high nub. And if I just smear up over that, I'm gonna wind up with just a big build out spot that's to the level of that nub. So I'm gonna take my little mini grinder here and clean up those spots before I go over it again. Then I'll wipe everything down quick with a rag and blow it off and clean it and before I put any more filler on. All right guys, if anybody knows me, they know one thing about me for sure. I'm cheap, but maybe it's frugal. Now I got a buddy Andy who makes me look like a spendthrift. I mean, he's way cheaper, but I'm still cheap. So this is what I'm doing. I've got body putty. This is Napa filler, and so is this. I got to the bottom of this, and it's stiff. The top of this is all the residency of floating on top. So I scooped this all out of here, which was pretty stiff. And you can see how stiff it is. And this here is kind of sloppy. It's not brand new. It's been around probably two years, I'd say. Maybe longer. I don't know. So I'm going to chuck this can, and this can's going in the shaker. Got to put the lid on and always tamp it down on there. Because the other day I was shaking one, and it flew out of the shaker. And I remember the guy I bought the shaker from, using in the store. One time they were shaking a gallon of paint, it flew out and splashed all over. So I don't want that to happen. All right, I got this shaker tucked back here in the corner. I'll put it in upside down. Maybe gravity will help me a little too. Clamp it in. It's got some rubber pads on there. It's supposed to grip on the stuff, but I don't know. It's also got a hole here and a hole here. And you know what? I think I want to build a clamp for that. I think I'm going to do that because I already had the can of uh, Dynaglass that I shook. Flew out. Yeah, not sure what I'm going to do. Get a piece of ready rod or something, put it in there. So I took a piece of rod, it's quarter inch rod, threaded the end of it, made a wing nut for it, put a wing nut on the other end, and see if that works. I want something kind of convenient. If I could drop this in there and put the nut on and just tighten it up, snug it up, that'll be good. Kind of wish I didn't have to go through this extra step, but let's see how it works. All right, so I can go up on the bottom, then my little wing nut, I can get that on there. Ay, caramba. A little bit of a nuisance because I have the wing nut on there. But you know what? It's working. So I'll tighten that up, give it a little snug. Not bad, I think that'll hold it. Now we're gonna plug this thing in. Let's see what happens. Oh boy, scary. Ooh, get a little louder. Spin it in there. So it did loosen up a little bit, but I didn't lose the can this time. Loosen up to where it's spinning around in there. Oh, this is kind of loose. So it wasn't for my new gizmo, this thing would have flew out of there. Well, that's good. As I loosen up my gizmo, my gizmo being is really just a piece of threaded rod. It's got about, look at that, I can almost take the can out. And that would definitely have flown out of there. But it didn't. Awesome. All right. Well, let's see what this stuff looks like. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, it's so rich and creamy. Oh, yeah. The whole thing's nice. Look at that. It's all creamed up. Oh, man. That is beautiful. I had never thought of using a shaker on this until I watched Bad Chad. Thanks, Bad Chad. Okay, well I smeared a whole pile of putty on this car, and now I'm starting to sand it off in places. Like this rear quarter, I figured I had enough on it to where I could sand it all off once and be done with it, use the bad Chad method of just filling it with putty and then sanding it off once and calling it good. But, I'm already a pathetic failure. So, what I've got here is I started sanding along the bottom, and there's two things I've noticed, two flaws in this already. One is this right here. You can see where I haven't hit that with sandpaper. So those are definitely low spots, but I've already hit metal here. So I'm going to have to put a little more fill there. There's just no way around it. The other thing is, I don't know if you can see it, but that is a that's a dent. You can see it looks like a, like a very slight U shape. So I'm hoping I can sand this out more and get that leveled out. And then I'll put a little more filler in and take care of this. Anyway, I also got this guy. It's an eight inch DA. Now my compressor will not keep up with it, but I've been using it and then let the compressor rest a little while. So I'm alternating between this and that straight board. I have an air straight board like that, but that thing sucks down air like mad. So I gotta go out and break down and get a new uh, compressor if I'm gonna use that. And you know what, honestly, I think this one works better than the air one because I can just 
take nice long sweeps and it just takes a lot of the material off with the air one just chigs back back and forth the air one does work good but i think i'll probably just stick with the manual one i need the exercise did a little thing with the air compressors i have a junk air compressor let me show you craftsman air compressor you've seen them there's about a million of them out there that's what's left of the fan kind of took a dump started making all kinds of racket and banging and all kinds of noise so what do i do with that fix it nah i paid 20 bucks for it at the fair but this compressor i tried yesterday sanding to keep up with my new eight inch sander so i went down to the barbecue and i grabbed this other compressor i bought at a secondhand store for 100 bucks and i don't know it's a central pneumatic i think these go for like 300 bucks new i'm wondering what do you guys think should i go buy a one big compressor that would keep up with everything i don't know man i'm just thinking that i'm better off with a couple small compressors that i give 120 bucks for if i go with the one big one it's not portable so this is portable air for me i think i'm gonna go this route but let me know what you think okay so this is a i thought it was a da but it's not it's a random orbital so this is this this is solid. This always spins in a circle, unlike a DA, which will glide and not, not spin in a circle like this DA. This is a Harbor Freight. It's a Bauer. See how that spins free, but it'll also go in an orbital direction. So a little difference with this. This is a DA. It calls it a polisher. This one, they call it geared orbital sander, but it's not a dual action sander that I can tell. See, it, it does that. Or this one, that paddle just roll. So yesterday I was sanding and I got a bunch sanded off. I got this quarter pan looking pretty good. I did the bad Chad method and just put on a ton of putty, which I wound up putting way too much here, but I've got it pre-leveled out because at that point I went to using this floppy grinder wheel and this this will just hog material off really quick. So I had to be careful not to go too far with it. Boy, that just took it right down. Same situation here. I had a big bump in the middle. I ground that off and then I started sanding some more. All right, started sanding this roof off. I got the 40 grit on this giant uh, eight inch uh, random orbital. So I gotta tell you, I, I, I'm a cheapskate. So I had the same sandpaper on here. I sanded that, I sanded that, I sanded that down there on that dog leg. And then I went over here and I sanded this. And then I started sanding the roof and it just wasn't cutting good. You can't be a cheapskate when it comes to sandpaper. You just gotta change it out and put the new piece on. Otherwise, it's false economy, and I'm running the compressor and everything, and it's just not doing nothing. So the sandpaper seems seemed like it was still pretty sharp. I fold it in half. I'll still use it for a rasp here and there. Feels sharp to the touch, but just wasn't doing it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sand this all down. I'm going to take out as much of this as I can. I'm using 40 grit. Then I'm going to step up to 80 grit. Then I'll probably even do 180 grit. And then I'm going to prime it with a couple coats of primer so I can get a nice sand off on it.
guess that'll let it cool down a little since it doesn't have a fan anymore. Well, that was good. I uh, had to change the paper here. I went with old paper here, change the paper here, change the paper twice on that side. Uh, I think a lot of that's from the glue residue. You know, there's still that gluey residue on there, even though I scraped it all off and used the xylene. The xylene did break it down, but still some residue on there. So now I'm going to step it on up to 80 grit. But before I do, you can see a couple spots, a couple dents there. They're highlighted by where the sander went over and it left paint behind. So I know I got a couple dings and dents. And some of these spots where I ground off the thing, I probably should have ground them a little further. I could have ground them off flush. Maybe I will hit them a little bit more with the grinder. We'll see. I'm going to do the 80 grit first, but at least that shows me where a couple dents are, probably from a 1974 hailstorm. Yes, we had hail in 1974. Well, close up the door. Well, I got a little bit done on that caddy today. Hey, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll see you guys on the next one.